The 1960s was a decade that started on January 1st, 1960 and ended on December 31st, 1969. The 60s was an exciting, revolutionary, tubulant era of the great social and technological change. Assassinations, unforgettable fashions, new musical styles, civil rights, and controversial war in Vietnam. The first man landing on the moon, peace marches, and flower power. Jefferson Airplane co-founder Paul Kantner mentions if you could remember anything about the 60s you weren't really there John F. Kennedy was sworn as the 35th president at noon on January 20th 1961 in his inaugural address he spoke of the need for all Americans to be active citizens famously saying ask not what your country can do for you ask what you can do for your country Two hours and eight minutes after President Kennedy was assassinated in a motorcade at Dealey Plaza, Dallas, Texas, Johnson was sworn in as president on Air Force One in Dallas at Love Field Airport on November 22, 1963. The Great Society program, with its name coined for one of Johnson's speeches, became Johnson's agenda for Congress in January 1965. Aid to education, attack on disease, Medicare, Medicaid, urban renewal, beautification, conservation, development of depressed regions, a wide-scale fight against poverty, control and prevention of crime, and removal of obstacles to the right to vote. The Vietnam War was also known as the Second Indochina War, the Vietnam Conflict, or the American War. It was a Cold War military conflict that occurred in Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia from November 1st, 1955 to April 30th, 1975 when Saigon fell. This war followed the First Indochina War and was fought between the Communist North Vietnam supported by its Communist allies and the government of South Vietnam supported by the United States and other anti-communist nations. The Viet Cong, a lightly armed South Vietnamese communist controlled common front, largely fought at a guerrilla war against anti-communist forces in the region. North Vietnamese army engaged in more conventional war, at times committing large units into battle. U.S. and South Vietnamese forces relied on air superiority and overwhelming firepower to conduct search and destroy operations involving ground forces, artillery, and airstrikes. In professional sports, pitcher Sandy Koufax of the LA Dodgers of the National League won the Cy Young Award in baseball in 63, 65, and 66. Other baseball greats included Willie Mays, Roberto Clemente, and Bob Gibson. Star football players included Albner Hayes of the Dallas Cowboys in 1960 and Joe Namath of the New York Jets in 1968. The first Super Bowl was in 1967 with the Green Bay Packers winning with a score of 35-10 to beating the Kansas City Chiefs. Basketball greats included Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain. Arthur Ashe became the first black man to win the U.S. Tennis Championship title in 1968. Arnold Palmer dominated golf in the 1960s. His chief rival, Jack Nicholas, came along with his own great golf career. Fashions in the early years of the decade reflected the elegance of the first lady, Jacqueline Kennedy. In addition to the pillbox hat, Women wore suits, usually in pastel colors, with short, boxy jackets and oversized buttons. Simple, geometric dresses known as shifts were also in style. For evening wear, full shirt, ball gowns were worn. For casual wear, capri trousers were in fashion for women and girls. Stiletto-heeled shoes were widely popular. As the suits drifted away from the pale, toned shades, men's wear was now bright and colorful. It included frills and carvettes, wide ties and trouser straps, leather boots, and even collarless jackets. Ties were worn even 5 inches wide with crazy prints, stripes, and patterns. Casual dress consisted of plaid button-down shirts with comfortable slacks. After designer Mary Quant introduced the mini skirt in 1964, fashions of the 1960s were changed forever. The mini was eventually to be worn by nearly every stylish young female in the Western world. The leaders of the mid-1960s styles were the British. The mods were characterized by their choice of style different from the 1950s and revealed new fads that would be intimated by many young people. British rock bands such as The Who, The Small Faces, and The Kinks emerged from the mod structure. 
It was not until 1964 when the modernists were truly recognized by the public that women were really accepted in the group. Girls had short, clean haircuts and often dressed in similar styles to the male mods. The mob lifestyle and musical taste were the exact opposite of the rival groups known as the rockers. The Beatles wore elastic sided boots similar to winkle pickers with pointed toes and Cuban heels. These were known as Beatle boots and were widely copied by young men in Britain. By 1969, the androgynous hippie look was in style. Both sexes wore frayed bell-bottom jeans, tie-dyed shirts, work shirts, and headbands. Wearing sandals was also part of the hippie look for both sexes. Women often went barefoot and some even went braless. In 1960, American U-2 spy plane piloted by Francis Gary was shot down over Russia. Communist China and Soviet Union split in conflict over communist ideology. 1961, U.S. breaks diplomatic relations with Cuba. Cuba invaded by Bay of Pigs by estimated 1,200 anti-Castro exiles aided by U.S. invasion crushed. East Germans erect Berlin Wall between East and West Berlin to half flood of refugees. USSR fires 50 megaton hydrogen bomb, biggest explosion in history. In 1962, Lieutenant Colonel John H. Glenn Jr. is first American to orbit Earth three times in four hours and 55 minutes. 1963, France and West Germany sign Treaty of Cooperation, ending four centuries of conflict. 1965, U.S. Marines land in Dominican Republic as fighting persists between rebels and Dominican Army. I got you, Early 1960s, the U.S. had achieved some notable successes, including the first weather navigation reconnaissance, early warning, and communication satellites. Unfortunately, the Soviets were the first to put their man into orbit. USA didn't follow until February 25, 1962, with John Glenn. Space race was, was starting to intensify as the years went by, Soviets catching up to the Americans with satellite technology. John F. Kennedy stated, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone and one we intend to win. It was finally accomplished on July 21st, 1969, with Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin landed on the moon while Michael Collins stayed in orbit.